All right, so the next contrast-related topic uh, has something to do with patients who have uh, chronic kidney disease and uh, uh, the potential solutions or at least uh, ideas how you could uh, uh, tackle that. The topics that we're going to uh, discuss or at least address at least to some extent will be uh, renal function and how to measure renal function and uh, compare what serum creatinine is and what is a GFR or EGFR. Maybe we'll talk also about cystatin C. Uh, then uh, uh, discuss a little bit what the rationale is for reducing contrast medium in patients with chronic kidney disease and then mainly really discuss what the practical application or how can we use a p potential uh, uh, algorithm that does it. But we also want to address uh, some of the limitations of uh, such an uh, approach. Now, the reason why this came up uh, on a larger scale was when uh, the transcatheter aortic valve replacement program started. It was like, a, I mean, I think about eight years ago or so. And you have here a patient who has uh, clearly severe aortic stenosis in diastole. You see the aortic valve is closed. In systole, the aortic valve hardly opens. There's this tiny little opening, uh, which should be as big as the entire aorta. So this is severe aortic stenosis, and usually these patients require the surgical repair. But then uh, what, was, what came out was a transcatheter aortic valve uh, repair, which is essentially a valve like this. So it's a, it's a valve which is this uh, whitish thing here. And the valve is, in fact, mounted within what looks like a stent. Right? And this whole thing is, is crimped on a balloon. It's put into the aorta. So here's a view from above. The, ca the whole device comes in from the femoral artery, goes through the aorta, comes down here. And then here you see this crimped valve on that, on that uh, balloon. And then once the, uh, then the, the balloon gets inflated, which puts essentially a new valve in place of the old valve. So that really eliminated the need for surgery and, uh, and, and uh, it's become really a staple of cardiovascular imaging and the entire process of uh, uh, treatment planning for uh, structural heart disease uh, relies a, a lot of that. But one of the things that was uh, an issue with these patients are that uh, these, since uh, for planning of these procedures you needed a gated chest and mainly because uh, you needed to freeze the motion to measure uh, which kind of valve you could put in place. But you also needed an abdomen pelvis CT angio because you needed to know if this whole delivery system could be uh, put up the femoral arteries and the entire uh, aorta to deliver it. And so you would need about 80 to 140 cc's of contrast. And the question that came up with early on was, well, these patients are all elderly. So back in the days, we were all between 90 and, uh, and 100 or more. And uh, you wonder if they could really take so much contrast, because we know also that these patients often have a chronic kidney disease. So the first attempt was to, well, we could do it without contrast, which is not a good idea, because then you cannot measure the annulus at all. But then, can you reduce the contrast? And we said, well, you can reduce it, but how much? So what you gonna what you're going to do, what you're going to propose, and is it still safe? So... Um, let's go and discuss a little bit what chronic kidney disease uh, means, what it's defined. And so you know typically a normal kidney function has, is defined as a, 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 a glomerular, uh, glomerular filtration of more than 90 and having no uh, other lab values of uh, abnormal kidney function such as uh, or, or proteinuria. And uh, serum creatinine has a parameter that is most often used to measure renal function or kidney function. It's ex it's filtered by the kidneys, neither reabsorbed or excreted, and can be used to calculate the renal function, the GFR, which we usually, uh, uh, you can measure it directly, which is very complicated, but you can also calculate it. Now, one important aspect of serum creatinine is, is that the concentration rises when the renal function decreases, but obviously it just takes some time. So even if your kidney shuts down completely, the creatinine will not rise within an hour, right? The creatinine will rise the next 24 or uh, 72 hours, because then it rises only once the, it starts to accumulate uh, over time. And uh, creatinine is also not a great marker for renal function, or at least not a perfect marker, because it depends on muscle mass. So creatinine is a, a met metabolite of, uh, of, of muscle. So if you have more muscle mass, you will have more a higher concentration of serum creatinine. And uh, if you are a, a uh, 
a passionate meat eater, then you also your creatinine will be higher than if you are a, a vegetarian. And so it's not a perfect marker, but at least it's a very commonly used one. And you can use it to calculate uh, uh, EGFR out of it. There are several formulas to it. So uh, the most commonly used uh, formula is the is the uh, National Kidney Foundation formula, which we'll show in a moment. But just in terms of what do we, how is a chronic kidney disease defined? So uh, usually 60 to 90 is has been already defined as mild to moderate. In the radiology world, usually everything above 60 was kind of considered normal and we didn't really adjust anything in our conscious protocol to do that. It turns out that this is more lenient these days, so the, the moderate uh, chronic kidney disease has been kind of divided into like uh, 3A and 3B, and essentially the main uh, threshold that we currently use in our uh, policies and protocols before we think about uh, changing our protocols or doing something in patients with chronic kidney disease is once the EGFR is uh, 45 or lower. So because if you give contrast in patients above that, usually uh, it's uh, pretty uh, safe. Now, uh, let's go back to our patient and uh, uh, see uh, if we even need to reduce uh, the contrast in her. So when you look at her history, she has progressive dyspnea, uh, profound fatigue. She has uh, was recently admitted for heart failure. She responded well on di to, to diuresis though, but she also has a history of Hodgkin's. She had radiation 50 years ago and she had a history of breast cancer with mastectomy. So many of these patients have very complex uh, histories with all kinds of diseases accumulated over uh, a, a long lifetime. Now her creatinine is 1.5, so do you think that that's bad? Is this chronic kidney disease? Well, again, Chronic kidney disease or creatinine alone is not a good parameter uh, for renal function. In the old days, we would have said 1.5 creatinine is actually normal. But when you correct this for for using the uh, the National Kidney Foundation formula and you calculate the EGFR for her, then you would end up with a uh, an, uh, GFR of only 33 milliliters per minute per 1.73 millimeter uh, squared. So she would actually fall into that category, so into 3B, so kind of closer to uh, uh, to 30 than to 45. So she obviously has chronic kidney disease. So the question is, what can we do about it or should we do, do anything about it? Now, uh, just to keep in mind, so the, the, the formula that I just showed you, that's the formula that we use most of the time and when you use a calculator uh, on the on, on, on the hospital side and epic this is the essentially the formula that uh, is is being used so results in this case in 33 milliliters per minute per 1.73 milli uh, meter squared of body surface area so the question is can we use this EGFR to determine a safe dose for the patient so what how can we do this or is there a way to do that it turns out that over several years, starting in the uh, in the ninth, uh, more than 20 years ago, there has been quite a lot of literature which has shown both uh, experimentally in animal experiments, but also in uh, also in um, uh, clinical data that the risk of developing contrast-induced nephropathy is a function of how much contrast you give and how poor your renal function is. So the volume to creatinine clearance ratio has really uh, a good, uh, uh, I would say, theoretical, uh, uh, experimental and clinical basis. So if you give a lot of volume to a patient who is poor uh, EGFR, that's bad. If your renal function is normal, you can also give more contrast. And one uh, interesting study is this one here. This was done um, uh, in patients who underwent coronary C a, a coronary cath in about almost 60,000 patients. So and what they found in this study is that if your contrast volume is not more than two times the EGFR, then the chance that you would get uh, acute kidney injury is in fact not higher than the natural background fluctuation if you would not give contrast. So two times the EGFR in volume seems to be a decent parameter that has been used uh, in the literature. I mean, again, this is intra-arterial, this is coronary angio, it's not IV, it's not CT, so it's not the same, but at least it's a good guideline where you could uh, take for a start. So we concluded that 
we could try that. So why don't we use uh, the EGFR of the patient multiplied by, by two and use that as an as a volume or as a limit how much contrast we give. What we do in addition to that is we correct this for uh, a patient's body weight uh, and we use low contrast, uh, 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 low iodine con uh, concentration contrast medium. So for a patient with an EGFR of 33 times 2 would mean that she could get 66 milliliter of contrast if she was 75 kilograms heavy. If she is smaller and she only had, uh, I think, 50 kilograms, then you have to give less contrast. And how much less is simply uh, given by the relationship between 50 and 75 kilograms. It's very simple. If a patient would have 140 uh, uh, kilograms, like almost uh, about twice as much as this, then you would give twice as much. It's very straightforward. Now, the question is, why do we have to adjust the EGFR for body weight? Well, the reason why we have to do this is because when you look back at what the EGFR formula the, the, uh, the does is, it gives the contrast in, or the, the, it calculates the EGFR in milliliters per minute per body surface area. So it is, in fact, um, so it is, in fact, related to the, um, to body size, right? So, so if you have a, uh, the, a normal renal function, your, your EGFR will be, let's say, 65. And if that person is 200 kilograms or 40 kilograms, it will always be 65 because that's a normal, a normal value corrected for a patient's body weight. The true EGFR is obviously body weight dependent because you imagine if you have either, if you even perfectly healthy people, if one person has like, 70 kilogram and the other one has 150 kilogram, the same kind of muscle mass, perhaps, also relatively speaking, then they will have very different uh, 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 GFR. So because it's corrected for body weight, before you give contrast, you have to correct for that. You have to, in fact, uh, uh, take into account that these patients are uh, smaller. Just for completeness sake, the original Cockroft gold formula, it does actually calculate the absolute milliliter uh, in minutes, so you could use this too theoretically. You can actually correct back for her BSA that would, so her absolute uh, uh, GFR would probably be 20, closer to 22 uh, milliliters per minute. Now, so if we have uh, our formula, we have maximum volume we can give based on the two times the EGFR, we correct for body weight. So in her case, we would give instead of 60 cc's, we could 44 cc's of contrast, and then we need to check if the image quality is okay. And it seems pretty decent. You can also, only with 40 cc's of contrast, you can use low KVP, etc. You still get a decent uh, quality uh, of, uh, of uh, images. So can you use it for other applications other than TAVR, uh, this, uh, this rule? And I would say in principle, you can. You can argue that if you just want to avoid uh, kidney injury, then you can use it two times EGFR formula. You correct it for body weight, but then you still need to do a reality check. And the reality check means that if somebody says, okay, do a runoff study in a patient with an EGFR of uh, 13, and you calculate a contrast volume uh, of, I don't know, 35 cc's, then your, uh, your, I think your cerebellum should tell you that this is not going to work. Because if I give 35 cc's of contrast for a runoff, where I have 35 seconds injection duration, I would inject one cc per second. So this is not going to work. So you have to kind of check if this is going to work. If it, the, the formula tells you or suggests that you should use 20 cc's for a triple A patient just for surveillance, then you can say, well, this should be perfectly fine because you can scan and maybe scan faster, scan in five seconds. You can get a flow rate of three or four. It will be perfectly enough. So you have to check this uh, by yourself and make a, a uh, an executive decision which has to lie on the physician side. You have to decide if you're going to do that. You may also decide if a patient comes in with an acute dissection that you don't care about what the renal function is because this is an emergency and so we scan with full dose. Okay, but this is all things that have to uh, happen on the on the physician side. Just for completeness sake, you can consider uh, a prehydration protocol. 
uh, which uh, which um, I would uh, consider doing once in a while. Uh, usually not in the Tava population because the patients who are uh, with severe aortic stenosis, you don't want to overhydrate them anyway. But it's in fact enough to in, to prehydrate them ideally IV for only one hour. So three cc's per kilogram in one hour is perfectly fine. You don't need to uh, truly kind of uh, admit them for 12 hours and to hydrate them because a true uh, prevention for kidney injury is that the kidney piece while you give contrast, you just want to have enough uh, 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 saline on board. Now the two questions that we still have to answer are the following. First of all, is it safe to give contrast in terms of are we really preventing uh, chronic kidney injury or even if we do our low dose protocol, maybe patients still get chronic kidney disease. So we need to check if that's actually true. And finally, obviously we want to make sure that if we give such small amount of contrast, is the image quality really adequate? So we have to be uh, critical uh, to ourselves. Now, in terms of image quality, so here's a patient uh, uh, with uh, 87 kilograms chronic kidney disease. So this patient had a history of, of um, esophageal cancer. That's important because one of the alternatives, if CT doesn't work, is they could do a transesophageal echo to measure the annulus instead of a instead of a CTA. But that was not an option. So despite the patient had a creatinine of four and the EGFR of seventeen, and everybody was kind of really scared to give him contrast at all, uh, we ended up calculating that the patient could get thirty cc's of contrast, and then Leo tweaked all the parameters so we could try to get the lowest KVP possible with the machine. And I would argue the images are kind of decent. I mean, they're not kind of brilliant and they're not super bright, but you can clearly see where the aorta is, where the annulus is. And we also felt that we are pretty confident that we can measure the diameter of the annulus, which is really what the whole study is about. So if we were not able to do that, then we would have not done our job. The iliac arteries is excess vessels. Again, don't look great, but again, uh, I would say it's diagnostic enough, at least we felt we are diagnostic enough uh, to, uh, to read the studies. Now we did an analysis of that and so we compared uh, two groups with a standard contrast and a low contrast and we asked the readers if they found the images are excellent, good, borderline or, or inadequate. And as you can see here, uh, it just documents more our self-confidence than our, our true uh, uh, ability. We said that none of the studies are inadequate. We can read just everything. Right? Uh, but admittedly, the image quality was better in the standard contrast. So we had a higher quality, a higher percentage of excellent quality, only one borderline. And we had more borderline studies with low contrast. So we thought that it's kind of adequate. But then when we measured uh, the measurement accuracy or the inter-observer variability of the annulus measurement, it turned out that the variability then goes up. So we fooled ourselves a little bit that we can read everything, so we can read it, but the measurements are not as accurate. So we have to be a bit cautious about uh, your self-confidence, about how well you can measure something. And uh, it's also illustrated you really need some rigorous parameter to measure rather than just subjective uh, image quality. Now here, the question comes up, obviously, is it safe? And this is a kind of a not very systematic uh, uh, analysis. These are just a lot of patients that I have, or some of the patients I've just jotted down uh, over over the last just two years uh, since we they all from the from the fourth machine, uh, where there was at least some discussion or some question if we should do it or where we talk to the clinicians or what we should do. So these are all patients who had, a, for example, 78 year old. So she had a EGFR of 16. This is really not a lot. And we still decided, based on, the, on all the situation, to give her 25 cc's of contrast, creatinine was 3, and it turned out actually quite okay. Then we had patients with like an EGFR like of 18, another 13 here, EGFR of 13, 40 cc's of contrast, because the patient was relatively large, so got 100 cc's. But also, in this patient, everybody was so nervous that we even prehydrated the patient, despite usually we don't do this for TAVR patients, but also it was probably a VIP or I don't exactly know how this happens. Usually we don't do this. But again, the image quality was all good. None of them had any problems. And here a patient again, uh, 18, I'm sorry, 18 uh, GFER with also with 40 cc's of contrast. There was one patient though, 
relatively recently who did uh, develop acute kidney injury. Now here, look at the number. So uh, sorry, it just uh, moves when I touch it here. So when the uh, a ni a 91-year-old patient uh, EGFR of 20, so again, uh, not very good, and he got 50 uh, milliliters of contrast. It was a, a small uh, 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 Vietnamese man with 55 kilograms. And uh, after he got this contrast, his creatinine was uh, going up from 2.7 to up to 3.5. Then after three days, it just uh, trended down again. He did not get dialysis or anything else. EGFR also went from 20 down to 15, and then, then it recovered. But uh, what do you think was the problem here? The problem was not that uh, the, the formula probably didn't work, but one of the problems was it was just the calculation was just wrong. Because if you think about it, a patient with an EGFR of 20, you can give two times the uh, volumes would be 40 for a 75 kilogram person. This guy had only 55 kilograms, so he could have only gotten less than 40. So we, he should have gotten only 30 cc's of contrast rather than 50 cc's of contrast. So in this particular case, I think uh, you, you don't know if he would have also gotten acute kidney injury if you had given him only uh, 30 cc's of contrast. But this guy definitely got uh, too much because, I don't know, it was probably protocol in a rush. Uh, so overall, uh, I also remember another case who uh, who developed acute kidney injury and this is by no means complete. I'm hoping that I can entice any of the research interested people to make a thorough analysis and look at all the tower patients and all the low contrast patients to really see what happened to them and dig out the follow-up creatinines somewhere out of EPIC, which is an EPIC uh, uh, effort. Um, uh, but the only other patient I remember was a patient who had a CT angio done with our protocol, but had a coronary angio the next day. And uh, so uh, this patient also developed acute kidney injury. But again, we shouldn't have done the CTA and the coronary angio on the next day. This was just a scheduling area. So overall, I feel that uh, it is uh, uh, pretty safe. So just in summary, uh, so uh, dosing a contrast medium based on the EG on EGFR is a reasonable thing to do. There is good uh, theoretical, experimental, and clinical evidence to do this. Uh, not for CT, it's not in the guideline for intravenous injection, but I think it's reasonable and at least it gives you some idea of what you could uh, inject uh, to be relatively safe. And we use a protocol where we use low concentration uh, upamidol rather than the 370 concentration. And it is a well established for TAVR patients. So for TAVR patients, you don't really need to do anything because even in the TAVR rec sheet, they say if poor renal function, use a low EGFR protocol. Um, for any other scenario, like in body or for anything else, it is the uh, it is a, a physician's responsibility to do a reality check, so to decide if it makes, so first of all, to calculate how much contrast a patient could get. So you need to know the patient's weight and the EGFR, and you need to make, make a judgment call if you think that the amount that you feel is safe, that uh, you wanna wanna do this. Uh, overall, it appears to be safe, at least in our experience, and we've done I don't know, um, uh, I would say hundreds of them. But again, there is no proof, and it's uh, uh, it's neither in the guidelines nor nor is a prospective or really uh, hard uh, evidence deriving uh, study has been done. And occasionally you want to discuss this with a team. Uh, the reason is because sometimes uh, you also want to share that responsibility and make this decision together. You can tell them, okay, I'm happy to give this patient uh, 40 cc's of contrast, but you know, it's, it's, we think it's relatively safe, but there's, but it's no proof. And also you have to ask them to do the follow-up because they will be able to order the follow-up creatinine to make sure that the creatinine trends back uh, down. So. The image quality, so it is, I do think it is safe. The image quality, I would argue, is diagnostic uh, and uh, it gets better uh, with low KVP and iterative reconstruction and uh, the force certainly is the most powerful machine that we have and we really tease out every little uh, piece of, uh, of uh, technical tricks that we can from this machine. But you still have to keep in mind the image quality is still 
not the same as a full dose contrast scan. So that's something you need to account for. So if, for example, when we have a tower conference where we discuss each and every patient, you say, okay, this, the, and if the, um, if the question is if you can use a 23 or 26 valve and it's very borderline, and I can say, well, our measurement is 23, but you know the contrast is not that great, then you say, okay, then they may consider doing a transesophageal echo during the procedure, which means the patient needs uh, general anesthesia rather than just um, just um, uh, just just sedation. But all these things can be accounted for, but you need to do this really in a, in a joint decision. Um, um, and uh, ultimately, uh, do the do the best for the patient. And if you cannot give contrast, then you also have to uh, find some other solution. In the end, it's our responsibility of physicians to try. Uh, to do the best. And with this, again, I thank you for your attention.